everyone welcome to ask simarjeet we have international life coach and motivational speaker mr simarjeet singh with us today and uh, recently we ran a campaign on simarjeet's website simarjeetsingh.com asking people about uh, what they wanted to ask simarjeet and uh, we have three questions with us which we've shortlisted so simarjeet the first question mm -hmm. that uh, we have with us today is how does one stay upbeat when life becomes stagnant personally and professionally um he says i'm feeling stuck you know what i've heard this before many number of times from my uh, whether it's coaching clients or audiences i've spoken to worldwide i'm feeling stuck and you know when i hear those words um i i feel you know there's a huge mismatch in between what you're feeling and what uh, the universe is providing mm -hmm. because right at this very moment when we speak this planet is rotating on its axis at thousands of miles per hour absolutely it's whizzing around in space uh, creation is happening you know and uh, it's life is never still if your jobs become boring i believe it's because you've become boring right and well in order to infuse that new energy probably you need to take a step back to figure out maybe why am i getting this feeling i feel one of the number one reasons why one, one might feel this way is that you've stopped growing and by growth i don't mean you haven't got the promotion or you don't have the next degree or something it's because you've stopped the growth process or the learning process personal there, growth personal growth and thereby now you are in a situation where you're feeling okay i've been doing what i'm doing for maybe umpteen number of years and uh, this is now started to define me and i can't see beyond it in order for you to break through that shell you're going to have to take initiative now don't wait for someone to come and tell you that i feel you have potential to do this or you should enroll yourself in that learning course or whatever uh, and i feel that since we've proactively uh, take charge of so many aspects of our life you know we pick the right clothes we want to wear where we want to eat and the diets and you know there's organic food available these days or what all you want to do we put in so much energy in all the other aspects of our life people have retirement plans investment plans etc etc how many folks out there have an inspiration plan you know do you actively seek out inspirational material if you're traveling and you're going to be traveling for 4 or 5 hours have you downloaded stuff on your phone that you would want to listen to or a book that you would like to read or a movie or invite that friend over for a cup of coffee who inspires you right i think a lot of us we we look up to magazines for latest fashions and you know we try and keep up to date with the trends and styles so i think we need to do that with our personal selves as well perhaps of course of course so sometimes it'll be the external environment sometimes it'll be the boss or the organization who'll say Hey, we feel you're ready for growth but the majority of the times you will have to reach forward you will have to take steps to make sure i don't feel stuck any longer because hey i'm enrolled in that online course learning a new language or i'm uh, networking with other people or i'm reading this book and therefore i'm not stuck anymore here's the thing most people are waiting for their circumstances to change so that they can change and i feel it is a reverse process your circumstances will change when you will begin to change so don't wait for the outside circumstances to change start their internal growth process i think a, a lot of people are wanting uh, you know circumstances like you said to push them out of their comfort zone right. so how how do you push yourself out of your comfort zone right. to to initiate uh, this sort of change well, that's a great question i feel peer pressure does a wonderful job you know because sometimes we can always evade being responsible to ourselves right that uh, hey i decided a new year resolution for example 31st december i'm going to change my life and then nothing happened because nobody knew the new, <laughs> the changes i wanted to make and therefore you know uh, if you want to make changes have partners along with you people who can ask you a week or 10 days later same with those that what happened with the new plan you talked about right so you build up accountability from people who are closest around you take new initiatives and understand that failure is going to be a part of the process so let's say you want to do 10 new things be comfortable with the fact that five may completely fail utterly fail and be embarrassing failures and that's okay and five may change your life you know i think it's a trade off worth making and i i think it's about breaking that uh, vicious circle mm -hmm. that once you step out of one thing and you get a positive feeling from just one change mm -hmm. out of the 10 that you intended it's it's a chain reaction that follows right it does you feed off the energy of the one thing that has worked well and that one thing then gives you the confidence to do more uh, kunali might be you know this is this is It's funny because people always ask me at the end of my talks and workshops would you recommend a book for me to increase my self confidence 
and I struggled to come up with a name because, you know, hey, and if you find one, please shoot me an email so I can read it too. I guess there's no book out there which is going to help you improve your self-confidence. The only way you build up more confidence is by doing the things that you're scared of the most. You know, reach out, take that risk. Make yourself vulnerable, but um, don't just sit still, except when you're meditating. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, that is one of the questions that, uh, the second question that we had was right. that, could you recommend a book that can serve as a guide in my quest for personal development? So I think that is not entirely different, but slightly. So mm -hmm. is, is there one particular book or a series of books or mm -hmm. anything that you would recommend for the quest for uh, personal development? Sure. There's been many which have been my constant companions over the years, but hey, disclaimer, don't look for a shortcut <laughs> in any one of them because there is none. There is no shortcut out there. Uh, what there is is food for thought. What there is is uh, stories and narratives of people who've already done this, been there, done that. I'm a big fan of this uh, particular gentleman called Robert Greene. He's authored many books over the years, The 48 Laws of Power, um, 33 Strategies for War, and I love his latest work, which I carry with me everywhere I go, is Mastery. Uh, and Robert Greene is a storyteller, a historian. He does an amazing job of picking up stories of masters, um, uh, both ancient and contemporary, about people who uh, have the courage to break away from the pack and do something different. So right from Michael Faraday to Leonardo da Vinci to Nelson Mandela and others, you'll find stories of how these people achieved mastery uh, of their struggles and how you can put those principles in action in your own life. So it's a wonderful book. I think everyone who is on a journey to improve himself should take out the time to take one chapter at a time, read it, digest it, implement it. Mastery is a wonderful book. Um, the second one I'm reminded of is uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, um, an old classic, but still very powerful lessons there by the late Dr. Stephen Covey. It's amazing how, um, you know, even if um, uh, the authors, uh, even if they merge with the universe, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People has been a very influential book in my life, um, helping me prioritize. And I feel um, as you set out to do something, your ability to say no to certain things and say yes, your ability to make those kind of decisions is really, really important. So those are sort of two books that come to my mind at this stage, Mastery by Robert Greene and Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Dr. Stephen Covey. Certainly, and I think the, the, what you said is very right. There are no shortcuts to anything. Mm. The shortest way of doing anything is to actually do it. True, true, so, which is what we run away from the most. Absolutely. <laughs> so I think uh, the best way to start in your personal quest is to get hold of these two books at least let this be an initiation and I'm sure uh, good things will follow. Definitely. So uh, the third and final question is, um, how does one discover one's passion mm -hmm. and how did you find yours? Interesting. So that's two questions rolled into one. Yeah. Um, I, for me, and I'll correlate the answers, I'll answer those questions together. Uh, for me, it was not a aha moment where I woke up one morning and decided, I, hey, I want to be a motivational speaker and a corporate trainer or life coach or whatever. Uh, it was a gradual incremental shift and it took birth from sort of a discontent with the status quo. Um, I was lucky enough to achieve some of the career goals that I'd set for myself a bit early. And uh, things became predictable after that. I think for our viewers who are perhaps not aware, it's very important for us to just briefly reiterate that mm -hmm. Simrajit started his career journey, his professional journey as uh, in the hospitality industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I believe he was doing very well for himself. Yep. And uh, in spite of all that, just to satisfy his own urge, he's moved on to motivational speaking and life coaching and I think that has been a lot more fulfilling than what uh, previously true, true. Uh, it was. And I don't believe it's ended there yet because I'm continuously evolving. Um, so things had become predictable, they had become routine and hey, guess what, boredom is not always a bad thing. Sometimes you ought to be bored because that is when you confront some of the important issues. And I confronted the sort of vacuum in my professional life where I felt that I'm probably not being challenged enough. I love challenges, you know, I'm a challenge driven person and um, I, I felt that this sort of predictability had set in, I needed to do something new. So here's the important thing, the discontent with the current um, state of affairs uh, will lead to you seeking out for some answers, right? Now most people stop there. Now I 
uh, was holding on to this process of looking for the answers. That led me to attending workshops and you know uh, reading books and asking other people what I should be doing. And in one of the interesting workshops, I was asked two questions, and I've shared this in other videos too. Um, two questions that changed my life. Number one was, what are you really good at? What do you so enjoy doing that time stops for you, right? That you're not looking at your watch any longer. You enjoy, not for the sake of the reward that you will get after it, but the process in itself is so rewarding. And second, what percentage of that strength are you currently using in your profession? And can you turn that into a full-time thing? Those were sort of the turning points for me, Kunal. So I got thinking uh, and I loved people development. You know, to see someone progress from level A to level B gave me a lot of satisfaction. Spending time mentoring them, coaching them, overcoming their resistance, you know, pushing them was really a good experience for me. So one thing led to another. And as Steve Jobs, he rightly said, <clears throat> he said, creativity is nothing more but connecting the dots. You know, so the dots were already there. But uh, I'll share this with you. It was not a one-off process. It was an incremental process of searching. When I left my job and returned back to India to do what I'm now doing, I had no clue that it will take the shape that it has taken today. What I vaguely knew, and it was a very broad, vague picture, that I wanted to serve people, to uplift people, to educate, and to be my own boss, to be an entrepreneur. So those are sort of the big picture things. From the big picture, things began to narrow down. And that's how I discovered, I discovered my passion. And I think that is a very important thing because when you find your calling, when you find something that you're really passionate about, then in spite of you, uh, you know, being at the absolute uh, ground zero, mm -hmm. you know, it, it is motivating enough for you to not stop and to continue doing it. Of course. And and you know, when you when you're at something for a long continued period of time, mm -hmm. you f you start finding answers. You do, and you enjoy the process of getting to from point A to point B. As a matter of fact, you get to point B and you want to sit there, will get the restlessness kicking in again. You want to go on to the next journey. And that's when your career bring, begins to blossom. That's when your life begins to blossom. So how you can find your passion? Think about things that you love doing as a child. Think of what naturally comes to you, effortlessly comes to you. Think of what would you do uh, for a living if money is not a priority. Today, if all your financial worries are taken care of, what would you do, right? How would you contribute to the world? These are sort of the questions. And I think Peter F. Drucker, the famous management guru, he said, uh, it, it's, it's not the, the beauty lies not in the answers, but in the questions. So think of, think along on these lines of what do I love doing? Mm -hmm effortlessly to me, what makes time stop for me, uh, and how can I turn that into a profession? Don't expect answers immediately, and even if you do, don't expect success immediately. It's, it's going to be a gradual process Absolutely. Uh, of letting go, and like you, know, like you peel the layers of an onion, the peeling off the layers of conditioning and insecurities, you'll get to the core of who you are, and by that time, I hope you develop the courage to answer that. Absolutely. So I think uh, that takes care of our three questions well and I, I hope you don't have any other um, sort of um, things that are bothering you. In case you do, in case you have any more queries, anything that you wish to ask Simarjeet, uh, be sure to tune into our series Ask Simarjeet and you can shoot in your questions uh, to info at simarjeetsingh.com and uh, you can visit Simarjeet's website which is SimarjeetSingh.com and uh, get to know about Simarjeet and uh, there's, there's lots of other valuable resources on this interactive website that you can uh, tune into, you can have a look at these things and uh, enrich yourself. So until ne next time, um, thank you. Thank you, Kunal.